My name is Fran. I am a hand spinner, natural dyer, knitter and toy maker. I also live with a chronic illness called ME. I was born and raised on the south coast of Britain, but I have been living in France for almost 10 years now. I live with my French husband and our bilingual son in central Finisterre on the western edge of Brittany. Woolen Hearted is the name I finally settled upon for my little home studio and all that is created within its stone walls. In those snatched, quiet moments between homemaking and mothering a growing toddler, it is here in this sunny little room overlooking the vegetable garden that I pursue a variety of heritage fibre crafts at an intentionally slow pace. Woolen Hearted is also the name for this little journal. It's a place for me to catch my breath and gather my thoughts, to talk about my making and to delight in slow and sustainable creativity with wool that has been grown, gathered and crafted in these Breton hills. Welcome to the Woolen Hearted Podcast. Knitting wise, it's been a month of um, of quite a lot of frustrations, quite a lot of false starts, um, getting started on things that have not been working out really as I planned, and I think it's probably a reflection of not being very well. Um, we all had flu, and it's all been rather difficult. But I think as well, it's it's so easy to to not. Um, to not see a reflection of real life in in that state sometimes in one's knitting because in in our in our sort of family life it's felt like there's been a lot of things almost about to start and then not not really happening so it's been good to look to my knitting and to remember that it's okay to to start and to pull things out again and cast on something new so I'd been um, really keen to work with some hand spun, which I had spun in the um, back in the autumn when we first moved here. So this is some Manx um, DK weight that I'd spun up in November as part of the Wavember wool along, and it was spun from a hundred gram top of combed fleece. I think it came from World of Wool, but I can't quite remember. Um, and really the point of it was a was both to allow me to get to know a new sheep breed but also to really hone my worsted spun skills because as I mentioned last time I'm probably naturally a woolen spinner at heart and uh, I find worsted spun quite hard physically as well as um, perhaps sort of philosophically um, so I'd been saving this project this uh, yarn up for quite a special project. I was sort of toying between the idea of some socks or something that requires quite crisp stitch definition. So, um, for example, cables. And I settled upon um, a lovely hat design by Jared Flood, which is called the Burnaby hat, which is um, a sort of a Gansey inspired cap. Um, that can be knit in bulky weight or DK weight and so this just seemed perfect. I had, I thought I had enough um, and I was hoping that the stitch definition would really come up um, well. Passed it on on the Friday evening. I ended up working um, on each of the evenings a little bit too far beyond my bedtime and come Sunday evening I was on the verge of casting off when I was about to run out of yarn and I think the reason was because the pattern um, allows for, uh, or the meterage was correct in the pattern but it also allows for 
be making a slightly longer brim and I wanted to make a slightly longer brim. So I was in the process of working out how to um, go back to the, the castle and remove some stitches to then make the, the brim shorter um, when my partner who for whom the hat was destined for the cane down saw me about to chop and said oh don't cut that um why are you gonna do that and oh but you know I've not got enough yarn and it was supposed to be a surprise hat for you and and he tried it on and he didn't like it <laughs> Um, in a way, the good thing was, was I didn't, um, I didn't waste yarn, um, and the next day I unravelled it, the next day was Monday and I unravelled it and reballed it and, um, soaked it, washed it, sort of, to get the kinks out and then reballed it and the funny thing was he was saying to me, but, oh no, why are you wasting that, what a waste of time, um, knitters you're so patient blah 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 and I sort of turned around and said to him but yeah if I hadn't have been knitting this hat we wouldn't have been sat out um, on Saturday evening in front of the house with a cup of tea till the sun went down quite late knitting away and um, on that particular evening we heard a funny sort of grunting noise looked across the field just beyond the house and there was a little family of wild boars running across the field so there was a a female and her little piglets I suppose or ballets or and it was wonderful and I would have missed that had I not been knitting on that hat so yeah trying to find the positive I suppose from uh, what could otherwise be seen as a failure um, I've since gone back to the original idea which was to knit a pair of DK weight socks so I've cast on a pair um, of the church mouse classic sock pattern so it's a really really basic pattern um it's just such a while since i've knit a pair of socks that i can't remember i i know how to make socks i just can't remember my um optimum uh measurements or i can't find the little formula i used to use because i mainly used to knit dk weight socks actually um because i really like these in the winter i find them much i tend to wear them as bed socks or in welly boots or walking boots so knitting them two at a time on circulars which is not um how the pattern's written but i've i've found now that two at a time on magic loop really works well for me um i learned to knit socks on double pointed needles and i would always i would always make both i never had a problem with single sock syndrome perhaps as well because i always tended to make socks um off from little leftover scraps so i would make little balls of divide the balls out um into two and then i'd either have the same um, this exactly the same pattern going through or i would have the same kind of combinations but not end up with the same sock so i used to do that quite a lot as a teenager because it was my sister-in-law and my grandma one of my grandmas who taught me how to knit socks um one being danish the other being swiss so i had two european methods of sock knitting um, but it's been quite a while since I've made any socks for anyone um, and so I, I saw this pattern and it was a little bit expensive but I thought it, it really fitted what I wanted and I think um, if it works I think it will sort of become my my basic sock, DK weight sock and I think it's going to be, be really good. So I actually cast these on last night um, and sort of made steady progress so far. I was intending to work on them a little bit this afternoon when I was having a quiet afternoon with my son and then he got there before me and broke my needle so he likes playing with my knitting and um, yeah so yet another full start. I think I've got it, I'm knitting these on 3.25 millimeters so I'm hoping I've got another pair in my knitting needle stash um, if not I might rip back and start again and just go and go down to size 3 I'm not sure because I tend to knit a little bit loose so but yeah so quite a lot of frustrations I have also been working on um, a 
a toddler cape and actually dyed toddler cape for our little boy um, but I can't show it to you right now because he, although it's really hot, um, he's it's almost finished. Um, I've just got to knit the um, the button band to go on the top. And although it's very very hot, he's taken it out to bed with him. So um, he's not sleeping under it. He just sort of had it next to him. But I didn't want to to take it with me when I left the room when he'd fallen asleep. So I'll have to show you the next time for that. Um, yeah, so that's knitting for this past month. wise there's been a lot more um, successes if you want to say I've um, I finished the skein of yarn um, that you saw me working on in my last podcast so I at the time I was just making the first bobbin full of um, the first ply <clears throat> so that has since been entirely um, entirely spun up and plied and that's come out beautifully this is a really dark well I'm not sure if it would be considered black but it is a very very dark grey um, if you remember this is two it's a blend of two of the native breed sheep of Brittany so La Lande de Bretagne and the Belle Ilon Mer um, both of which are a very rustic um, unimproved sheep um, both of which come from Brittany and I think particularly the Lande de Bretagne has been um, in danger of becoming extinct but currently its numbers seem to be fairly well so that's the 100 grams of the black and I've also since spun up recently finished plying um, the white the corresponding white so that's to go together I'm really really pleased with how these two have turned out I've used um, it came from prefer prepared fleece so from the association um, Toise en Bretagne which I brought um, last year when we, when we moved here I also brought from them some um, car uh, some scoured but uncarded fleece uh, about a kilo's worth which over the course of the winter I've been slowly um, carding on my drum carder and spinning up um, into I sort of sorted the colours because there was a big mismatch of um, all the different colours that are available in the fleece. These two uh, breeds of sheep are generally either black or white. Um, coloured sheep are quite a, a normal part of the sheep breed as actually is the case for most sheep breeds um, but the black can vary from very black to sort of a rusty kind of um, almost golden brown depending on how how much time they spend outside to a kind of a lighter grey and you can get actually particularly with the Lande de Bretagne you can get some uh, of both colours on the sheep which I love they're my absolute favourites um, so I try to sort of sort the fleece into um, more or less similar colours and then I, I purposefully spun a kind of a very sort of light and fluffy but um, kind of I was trying to make a tweedy yarn which um, and, I, and I've been trying to go from sort of darker to lighter I've got more of this one it's just these ended up in small skeins and small hanks and then I've got some, the last one to do will be a white and I'm really um, looking forward to making a nuke sweater from Liner magazine and sort of going down. I can't work out if I'm going to go from light to dark or dark to light. Um, but that's the idea for, for this wool. And I'll just be really interested to see how it, how it wears because I've never made a kind of tweedy yarn. And I got the impression that the 
tweedy flex are the kind of the nep that normally it's those either second cuts or little um, the tips or different things that normally I'm sort of trying to avoid. Um, I've got none at all in in this, for example. So it's quite a, a dramatically it's a, a darker version. So look, there's like a little bit of white. Um, this is the darkest one, which I really love. So it's quite sort of fluffy and I'm just wondering is this going to pill? I, it's also sort of a bit thick and thin. It was very, very hard to work with actually, this this scoured but unprepared fleece. Which is quite strange because actually the carded version when I've bought from them is beautiful. It's so beautifully carded um, which I generally find quite rare in French prepared um, ready to spin or ready to felt fibre. Fortunately, I sometimes feel that I'd be better off recarding it myself on my hand cards um, because it just lacks, it almost needs to have had one last pass in their enormous carding machine. Um, whereas the, the wool that comes in the carded bats from uh, Tolle and Breton is, is beautiful to work with and it is so silky and smooth to spin with um, by contrast the the wool that came um, scoured but um, uncarded was very dry and almost over processed um, it was very difficult to, to pull the locks apart it had all been jumbled up um, and it sort of gave me confidence to think that my own sort of scouring I, I've been trying lots of different types of scouring particularly over the last month um, which I'll perhaps talk about in a future podcast but just gave me confidence that um, what I do is not too bad um, because this isn't great kind of thing um, I mean just to give you an example this is some carded bat that I carded myself um, on my drum carder this is Lecon fleece so this is another french breed um this this breed comes from the um, the larzac region which is um a, a limestone plateau in the sort of uh, well kind of middle south of france um and i'm going to talk to you more about this one next time because this is one of the next things i'm going to be spinning um but th there's just an example it's it's some wool that I um, was sent direct from the farm um, where the sheep come from. It's organic. It's, it was 100 grams from organic fleece. Um, it was my friend Florine who sent this to me last autumn or a bit before. No, it was a bit before. I think maybe a year ago actually. And I scoured it last autumn and carded it. So it, it will need to be um, carded again. It was just, I wasn't sure if I was going to be felting it or spinning from it. Um, so that's why it's and it's quite um, sort of moist and it's, and it's retained that lovely sheepy, sheepy smell. But that's going to be one of my projects in August. So I'll put that back there for a minute. Um, but this wool, I'm really keen, coming back to the Britain Breton wool, I'm really, really keen to get casted on straight away um, for something with this. Partly so I can take part in the Nature Shade with Long, um, which is organised by Louise of Knit British. I'm a really big fan of everything Louise does um, in uh, championing British witches, the wool from where I'm from, but also encouraging folks all around the world to um, look local to them and to love their local wool. So even if they're not in Britain, it's sort of the idea is to encourage people to um, yeah, to to look to where they are and try to find um, more more out about the sheep where they where they are and um, people who produce and support the people who produce the wool um, locally to them. So at the moment, she's running a a knit along which is called the Nature Shades Along, and the idea is to celebrate the wonderful natural sheepy colours and to knit um, something in. Um, the natural colours of a sheep local to you. So I was needing um, more than one colour because I, I think she's done it in the past and I had a feeling it was just a single colour, um, which I would have, well actually no, I could have 
casted on that but I perhaps would have just used a either just this black or just the white so I needed to have the two but the really good thing is about having the two is I can now have a go um, at some or oh, a new technique to me which is Mar Isle And if you've heard of wonderful Anna Maltz, um, read any of her editorials in Pompom magazine, um, got any of her previous knitting books or heard her talking, um, she was recently on the Making podcast, which used to be the Woolful podcast. And she also hosted a really, really interesting um, kind of web conference a year ago, I think, um, as a response to the Pussy Hat um, happening I don't know if I can call it that and her most recent publication was book Marile which is where she's um combining the idea of fair isle um so stranded color work and multiple colors with marling to buy it through Lynn Dizil lovely Yasmin um who's based in Saint Malo and uh and yeah i i bought these books for myself for my birthday and i fell in love with all the patterns and of course i want to make everything but i'm particularly drawn um at the moment to either the hoswas hat to get started if i just find it which is a really looks like a simple place to begin the gingham cow which i think i may be favoring the gingham cow it's not a great picture there um think that would work really really well um, with the black and white and I can't really explain to you yet in detail uh, how the process works because I'm yet, although I've read the book quite a lot since I've got it, I've not yet tried it myself, I've been waiting to have the, the right yarn but essentially what I'm going to be doing, I, th I think I'm going to make the cowl, I'm going to be holding the two strands and knitting them together so I'm going to get a mild um, a mild effect going on in the yarn and then there will be little sections um, so the gangnam cowl is like gingham um, so gingham is obviously like a checked fabric and for each of the sort of the checks I'm going to be bringing one yarn to the front and one of the colours so it will either be the white or the black and then holding the other behind like I would carrying it behind like I would with fair isle and the sort of the really exciting thing about this technique is it allows you to have three colours with just two balls of yarn. And it can also allow you to have um, sort of uh, the restriction of, of a fair isle is that you can only, um, I'm just trying to think how to explain it, with the hat for example, you've got these lovely bands of contrast colour coming down which is impossible to do in Farrell you'd have to use intarsia or something like that so that's the, the sort of the draw of the um, of the Marrell to me but as I said I'm not I've not yet done it I've not yet dipped my toe in um, and I'm not entirely sure how it's going to work out so hopefully the next time I I pop in here I'll have something um, something casted on
High summer, deep summer, is here in France. The kind that turns the fields yellow, the trees dry and the streams shrinking. The kind of summer that also keeps us inside during the hottest parts of the day. Shutters down and drinking long glasses of cold, icy water. Once the sun has lost some of its fierceness, we head back outside again into the garden. We seek out our favourite spots in the welcoming shade of the trees. Fill up old tin saucepans with precious rainwater saved from the winter and splash around under the apple tree. For our fledgling vegetable garden, these boiling, baking days of summer are a blessing, of course. As the tomatoes ripen, the beetroot swell and the potatoes grow, we're slowly starting to enjoy the first fruits of our labours. Come evening, once our little one is in bed, the lingering sunbeams turn the garden a warm golden colour. We make a pot of tea and come out into the garden. Whilst my love is busy in the vegetables, I sit at my wheel, spinning in the balmy air. The motion of the treadles beneath my feet calms me from the heat of the day. By the time a bobbin has been filled with freshly spun yarn, I'm ready for sleep. This was the second episode of the Woolen Hearted Podcast. A big thank you to my family who helped me in all things big and small. And a big thank you to you for being here and spending this woolly time with me. I look forward to sharing another podcast episode with you very soon. But until then, you can find me online at woolenhearted.com and on Instagram as at woolenhearted.com.